Attention passengers. I have been blind since birth. Why would you get a, a guide horse and not a guide dog? Well, a few reasons. First of all, a horse can live at least twice as long as a dog. I know friends who have had five, six guide dogs. All right, and here's your boarding passes, okay? Second of all, a horse has better eyesight than a dog. And she won't chase cats. <laughs> no. <laughs> Callie is a miniature guide horse, one of only six in the world. And she does everything a guide dog okay, does. My girl. I'm gonna check Callie. Of course. Oh, hi, Callie. How are you? At Detroit Airport, she's patted down just like any other passenger. I don't know. You've got a pretty good girth to me. Well, she's clean as a whistle. Yes, she is. She doesn't even have no poop in the bag. That's right. <laughs> Every time they go out, the pair turn heads. Mona and Callie's destination is upstate New York and the farm where Callie was born. I have to admit, it's the first time I've ever seen a pony on the airplane. The seat is straight ahead to the right. A couple of feet, reach for it. There it is. They fly economy. But as you'll see, their bond is first class. I love you. Callie is just a unique horse. When people see her, they can see that she's doing a job. I can always tell when I'm walking down the street, she has happy feet. You know, you can tell that she's happy to do her job. She's proud of her job. And that's what this story is about. She's my wingman. She's my partner in crime. How animals of all shapes and sizes are helping in ways we'd never imagined. Animals can reach from every spectrum to help us. I believe that I could take 10 raccoons and help people and ten opossums and help people. Perhaps no one knows more about the connection between animals and humans than horse whisperer Monty Roberts. Horses were the family business. Monty's father broke them in, and when he was done, tried to do the same to Monty. I was born to a father that wanted to beat me up. I had 72 broken bones before I was 12 years of age, but I could ride. And so they put me out in front, and any time I was in competition, I didn't get beaten by my father because there were people around. I was safe in the public eye. I watched my father breaking horses in what I consider to be a most abusive way. The horse that feels pain from him doesn't like doing his work. Monty went the other way, building a career training horses without violence. Whoa and began to realize animals could help damaged people as well. You should have heard my professors when I suggested it. Why they went nuts. Get out of here, don't talk to us like that. that animals are animals, people are people. It's not true. Now we know it's not true and that animals can really help people. She brings joy and laughter every single day to him. Who's in that mirror? Who's in that mirror? She turns the simple tasks of life really into a life worth living. All right, here we go. A car accident seven years ago left Ned Rogers a quadriplegic. His mum needed a hand, and Casey, a capuchin monkey, joined the family. After about a year at home, Casey entered my life, and uh, he started to crack a few more smiles. And uh, even though I couldn't move anything, Casey really enlightened my life. Go ahead. Yeah, there you go. Good job. What is her role? And her role is to make me happy. And she sees that I'm happy just by being herself. And when she wrestles with me and she smiles right back at me, it puts the biggest smile on my face. That does a lot to rejuvenate the spirit. Look what I got. <laughs> she has a big soul and a big heart, and she's got a big brain that she is so yeah, willing right to use right to help Ned. Her right generosity of spirit 
is really yeah, special. I hope all of us can be as generous with our love and caring for somebody else as she is for him. It takes up to five years and about $40,000 to train a monkey to be a helper. Gotta flip it. This is Monkey Business Headquarters. The director is Megan Talbot. It really started as an experiment. Um, 1979, we asked the question, can a monkey be trained to help somebody with a spinal cord injury, just like a dog is trained to help somebody who is visually impaired? Yeah, nice job. Gotta love bath time, right? But the school does have its critics. Are they looking at you? To be a helper, the monkey's front teeth must be removed. Um, this is usually not something we talk about on camera, just to give you guys. Oh. I'll, I'll answer it, but you guys are going to get a lot of animal rights flack, so you may or may not want this in the interview. No, we'd, we'd love to know, <laughs> okay, uh, sure. and, and people will want to know. Okay, just just be prepared. Sure thing. You're going to get a lot of angry calls. That's okay. Um, the animal's front teeth are removed, and it's not you know because of their their biting, but because there is no such thing as a rabies vaccine for a capuchin monkey. So if they ever were to bite somebody, or somebody was even to accuse them of biting them, that animal could automatically be put to death for rabies testing. That's the only way you can test for that. So it's kind of a life insurance policy for our animals to make sure that in case there was ever an incident, that they wouldn't automatically be put to death. So some people believe that it's cruel. Yep. Yep, and you know, to those people, we say we respect your opinion and we do the best to make sure our animals are happy and healthy throughout their entire lifetime. Oh! Why a monkey and not, say, a dog? Yeah, why a monkey monkeys and not a dog? are able to do more advanced tasks that dogs cannot do. Good boy. Good boy, my sweet. Well, that's something this black Labrador from Wagga Wagga in New South Wales might well argue with. Hey, Good boy, love. Good boy. He's my partner in life, you know? I call him my wingman. Yeah. <laughs> Tiki shake. Good boy. Well done. Amanda man. has cerebral palsy. Her assistance dog, Tiggy, spends every day making her life a little easier. He's awesome. What? Just totally awesome. Before you got Tiggy, tell me what life was like. Um, very slow. Tiggy, tug. Just to like get my shoes and socks on in the morning is like half an hour at least. And so with Tiggy, he can pull my socks off in five seconds flat. Good boy. Find. Find. Good boy, lovey. Good boy. Find. And tell me that moment you two met. I cried. I cried. It was great. Yeah. A happy moment. Yep. Yeah. Well, if you knew how hard it was just to be me, and then something else comes into your life that's got four legs and a tail that's ready, willing and able, you know, and he doesn't care about the chair. He doesn't look at me any differently, you know? Doesn't complain? No. Goodness me, no. <laughs> as long as he's getting his treats at the end of the day or in a pat and a hug, you know? Yeah, and he's never refused to do anything for me. Never. You make such a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Tiggy, hold. Hold, buddy. Up. Animals like Tiggy provide Good practical boy. help. But it's the emotional lift which is even more important. Chrome boy. You ready to go to work? And that's opened new possibilities for horse whisperer Monty Roberts. Yeah. He's using horses to heal traumatised war veterans. If they can earn the trust of that horse and then trust the horse, they're reaching into another area of their life, one they hadn't seen since before they went to war. Former Staff Sergeant Alicia Watkins survived the 9-11 terrorist attack on the Pentagon. She served in Iraq and Afghanistan. And while on duty, she was raped. I can remember like two days, happy days there. Everything else is just... Horrible. What does a place like that do to someone? Uh, Lord. Um, you're, you're, you go from being a human to a predator and they want you to go back to being a human. 
After leaving the military, Alicia's life spiralled out of control. For a year, she lived in a car. The word I have trouble saying is the fact that I am homeless. By chance, staff working for Monty found her. When I saw her, I was devastated. A, I didn't think I had a chance. B, I didn't think she'd be there in an, in an hour's time. I thought she would flee. A, a, a male human couldn't get near her. That a girl. And it wasn't until we went out with the horses that I really noticed a difference. But this lady blossomed immediately. Can I turn him? You can turn him. Okay. I felt alive again. You know, I was just a, a dead woman walking and, and coexisting and just on autopilot. He trusts you <laughs> like a bosom buddy. But after those couple of minutes and being in that ring um, with the horse, I immediately saw something that would forever change the course of my life. And what do you put that down to? Well, the horses, the horses have to take credit for it. Without them, I could never have done with Alicia Watkins what happened. Couldn't do it. I love it every single time. <laughs> I love it every time. Just thinking about something happening to Callie now is pretty hard. I already spend more on her than I ever do on myself. <laughs> if only she could talk, huh? Right. <laughs> no, I mean, no, I don't want her to talk. <laughs> she would tell you too many things. And some things just don't need to be said. Like what these animals give to their companions. What Callie gives to Mona every day. It means that I can do anything. I can go anywhere, be anything. It's very empowering. It gives me many more options. I can do anything now. The treasures of these animals are there. We just have to understand that it's there. And we have to make use of it and we have to appreciate it and utilize it in our own lives. I think that's what nature intended. You are. She's a beauty.